multiple patches on one SD card. It's possible. Welcome back to the ever-growing video series about Droid, the Universal C Wii processor. So, having multiple patches on one of these SD cards is one of the most requested features by those who don't have a Droid yet. I personally prefer switching out the whole patch, but single functionalities uh, like single circuits or something with toggle buttons, so you can switch different parts of the patch independently from the other. But nevertheless, I came up with a nice idea of how you can switch between different droid patches on one card. By means of button presses, all you need is at least one P2B8 controller. And here's how it works. This time I show you that on a Mac computer, but it's really the same for all other operating systems. First, I insert the card reader and open its contents. As you can see, this card is pretty much standard, the firmware file and a droid patch. For a simple demonstration, let's now create three patches. Each one consists of a simple LFO that makes one of the outputs flash, so we can immediately see which one of these patches is currently active. Now, if you want to use several different patches on one memory card, the trick is in the correct naming. As a demonstration, I want to create three different patches, each of which contains just a simple LFO sending a clock to output 1, 2 or 3. So from the blinking, we can later see which of these has been loaded. Let's create the first one by duplicating the normal droid.ini. And now, and this is important, we rename it to droid11.ini. This means that this patch can be selected by button 1 on controller 1. Now let's open the file, remove its former contents and create a simple LFO which is sending a square wave to output 1. And now comes something very important. In order to be able to switch around between different patches, you need the buttons of your P2P8 controllers. So you need to e declare at least one controller here, even if you don't use it in the actual patch. Don't mind this strange extra file. It has been created by the Mac text edit program and doesn't harm. To be honest, I'm not sure what it's good for. It seems more like a bug to me. If you're going to edit more droid patches with Mac, I recommend getting a better text editor anyway. Now we copy this droid11.ini, rename it to droid12, open it and rename the output to 2. Let's repeat this for a third patch and here of course we use output number 3. So this time I'm nice to my computer, do a correct eject of the volume and let's load the patch into our droid. Okay, so now I show you how to load these individual patches. If you just insert the card and press the button, you get the droid.ini patch loaded, which is here the example patch. But if you now hold the button by pressing the load button, then you get the patch that's assigned to the button. So droid11ini is assigned to this button. If I hold this button while loading, I get droid12.ini. With this button, I get, of course, droid13.ini. And if I just press the button without any other button, I get the droid.ini again. You can do this for any of the controllers you like. So this button, for example, would be droid31.ini. You can go up to droid168.ini, which is quite a lot, I think. So I hope you liked this video. Please, with sugar on top, subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of the further videos which are still come. So see you next time and keep on making great music.